Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I want to continue our discussion talking about solving systems of linear time invariant ordinary differential equations uh, aka state space systems. If you've been following along you know that in our previous videos we talked about um, what the analytical solution to a state space system was and how it involved this thing called the matrix exponential. What I want to talk about today is well how do we compute that matrix exponential. In particular I want to look at computing this matrix exponential using what's sometimes referred to as the Laplace method. Okay, so um, to jump right into it, uh, let's just refresh what we talked about in some of our previous discussions, right? So remember, our state space representation, our linear time invariant state space representation, just looks like x dot is equal to ax plus bu. And we showed earlier that the analytical solution to this was this large expression, which involved the matrix exponential and the um, initial condition, as well as the, the particular slash convolution integral slash however you want to think about it, you basically have the the homogeneous and non-homogeneous response here. So this is pretty much your analytical solution, okay? So what I want to talk about today is let's go ahead and consider the, homog uh, the autonomous slash homogeneous case. So in other words, what if u is equal to zero, right? You have no external inputs, right? So in that case, well, um, well your state space representation becomes really simple, right? Well, maybe <laughs> really simple is relative, right? But you basically lose the bu part, right? You just have x dot is equal to ax. Right? And now, you know, let's rewrite this x dot. You can basically call this also, right? It's ddt of the vector x is equal to ax, right? I haven't done anything fancy there, right? Okay, so um, this is the homogeneous response, right? What does its analytical solution look like? Again, we have the analytical solution for both the homogeneous and the particular solution. So all we got to do is just X out this portion, <laughs> right? So all we're left with is the homogeneous slash autonomous portion. And for, for simplicity, let's consider the initial time T zero to be zero, okay? So let's just write that down. So the solution uh, with T naught equals zero becomes Again, it's, it simplifies quite a bit, right? So we end up with the analytical solution to that is nothing more than e to the a t, whoops, times x at time zero, right? Or let's call this sometimes, as we discussed earlier, this is sometimes referred to as your state transition matrix phi of t zero, right? So you could rewrite the analytical solution like this, where this phi of t, as we discussed earlier, this is our matrix exponential of e to the a t, right? And this is what we're looking to compute. I really want to compute this, this matrix exponential, this state transition matrix, however you want to talk about it. I want to compute e to the a t, okay? So um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, in fact, just to make this easy, um, let's go ahead and substitute um, this, right? Here is our analytical solution into the equation of motion over here, right? Or our, our, our ordinary differential equation or our simplified state space representation, right? So in fact, you know, to be, to be consistent, let me, let me label some of these equations to be consistent with my notes here. So that's equation three. This right here is equation four. So now what I want to do is let's go ahead and sub equation four into uh, equation three, right? Okay, so equation three becomes uh, DDT of, okay, what is X? We know what X is, right? It is this thing right here, right? It is um, phi of T times X zero, right? Is equal to A times, again, what is X? X is right here. It is phi of T X zero, right? That's what we've got. Okay. So um, this would obviously be true, right? Uh, how could you make this true? Um, well, actually, I'll tell you what, let's do one more step. Notice this here. Let's look at the left-hand side. This is a time rate of change of this state transition matrix, which is definitely a function of t, but this term right here is just an initial condition, right? So this can come out of the derivative. So in other words, I could write this as ddt of the state transition matrix times x zero like that, right? Has got to equal a times state transition matrix times x zero, all right? Okay, so how do you make this true? So this is obviously true if your initial condition is zero, right? But this is really the trivial result, right? I want to make this true for any possible initial condition, including non-zero initial conditions. So what that implies then is that this 
DDT has to equal this term right here, right? So the non-trivial solution is basically we need DDT of the phi of t to equal a phi of t, right? Right? Cool. So this, if you look at this, right, it's really, it's some signal dot is equal to a times that signal. So here again, we just end up, this is another, you could think about this as an ordinary differential equation, right? This is just some other ODE. So the last thing we need to kind of fully specify an ODE as we've seen in the past is, sure, you can have an ordinary differential equation, but to uniquely get a solution, we also need to, to nail down the initial conditions of this, this uh, ODE, right? So um, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, the initial condition, what is an initial condition for this? Let's go all the way back. Um, we need, uh, duh, 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 duh. let's come back and look at here, right? Okay, so here, what does this evaluate to at time equals zero, right? So we'll go ahead and consider equation four at t equals zero, right? That's this equation. So at t equals zero, this just looks like x of zero is equal to phi of zero times x of zero, right? Okay, and again, you stare at this thing long enough and you see the only way this is true for all initial conditions is what does this thing have to be? This has to be an identity matrix. Remember, the, the state transition matrix, it's, it's the matrix exponential right? So it's a matrix. It's an n by n matrix. So this thing has got to be a, basically the identity matrix, right? So by extension and analysis of this, in order to make this true, we see that phi of zero has to be the identity matrix. And maybe let's write it n by n just to be explicit, right? So here is the initial condition for this ordinary differential equation, right? So at this point, we pretty much have a full ordinary different differential equation of the state transition matrix. And again, to write this all in one concise statement, maybe it might be easier. Here's the differential equation we're interested in. Phi of t is equal to a phi of t, right? With an initial condition of, oops, the state transition matrix at time zero has got to be the identity matrix, right? So here we go. This, let's call this in, what, what number did I label this in my notes? Uh, this is do, 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 equation seven, okay? So this is what I need to solve, right? This will tell me if I can solve this differential equation for the state transition matrix, I should be good to go. Well. How do you solve ordinary differential equations? What's an easy way to do that? Um, remember we talked about using the Laplace technique earlier? In fact, that's the name of this discussion, right? So if you want a refresher on the Laplace technique, right, please check out this video, but I'm gonna assume that you're comfortable with the Laplace transform. So let's just take the Laplace transform of this guy and see what we end up with. All right, so to take the Laplace transform of that, again, let me just rewrite this in a little bit easier fashion. Maybe how about phi dot of t is equal to a phi of t, right? Here's our differential equation. So now what I can do is let's just take the Laplace transform of the left side and the Laplace transform of the right side and see what we end up with, right? So again, here is the Laplace transform. It's some arbitrary signal or matrix, however you want to think, a matrix of signals. It's all the same thing, right? But it's the time derivative, right? So remember, in our, our video talking about the Laplace transform, we know that a, time der a, a derivative in the time domain is equal to basically an S in the Laplace domain, right? So this whole term on the left side basically turns into s times phi of s, right? Minus, you gotta make sure we get the initial condition of this, right? So this is minus phi at time zero, right? Okay, is equal to, again, you take the Laplace transform of this, again, the A is constant, so that could come out here before I take the Laplace transform of this, and this is just, again, an arbitrary signal, so the best thing I can do is just call this capital Phi of S, right? And again, note the notation here, right? I'm gonna use capital Phi of S to denote the signal in the Laplace domain, where lowercase Phi is the signal in the time domain, right? So again, this is fairly familiar to if you if you watched our video on Laplace transforms, right? So here we go. Um, what have we got? Now, look at this guy right here, right? This is the initial condition of the signal in the time domain, which we said was right over here, right? It's the identity matrix, right? We just showed that. All right, so now we have S times capital Phi of S minus the identity matrix has got to equal A times 
phi of s. And again, here's where we see the benefit of going to the Laplace domain is the Laplace domain turns ordinary differential equations into algebra, right? I can now solve for capital phi of s, okay? So let's just do this, a couple of manipulations. How am I gonna do this? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, let me see, I want this thing. Let's move this to the other uh, side, right? Okay, so let's say, so it's s times phi of s minus a, or sorry, minus i, um, minus a phi of s is equal to zero, right? Um, I guess we can go ahead and move the identity to the other side if we want. So we get s times phi of s minus a phi of s is equal to the identity matrix. Okay, now let's pull out this on the left side. So I think we end up with, if I'm gonna pull out the capital phi of s on, excuse me, on the right, um, what does this interior become? It becomes s, then you gotta have an identity matrix, right? Minus a, something like that. I think that works, right? Okay, so now let's just go ahead and left multiply by this thing's inverse, right? To get phi by itself. So we end up with phi of s is equal to, what? It's equal to, um, S I minus A, this thing's inverse, like that, right? And then obviously you have the multiply by the identity matrix, but that goes away. So here we go. We have solved this guy, okay? Here is your state transition matrix. The only issue though is this is the state transition matrix in the Laplace domain, right? So let's write this down. So here is the solution to the state transition matrix. Or again, if you want to think about this as your matrix exponential, right, slash, let's call it matrix exponential, this is a thing we're trying to compute, but the only problem is that this is in the Laplace domain, okay? So the goal now, or, or the, I guess the workflow is this gives us a real easy way. If somebody gives you an A matrix, right, and you are trying to compute the matrix ex exponential of E to the AT, well, here you go. You can compute it in the Laplace domain. Then um, what you're going to do is compute it in the Laplace domain and then just perform the inverse Laplace transform, right? Um, so tell you what, let's, let's go over an example of this. Um, so let's say someone hands you an A matrix of, let's just use uh, an example of negative two, one, negative one, two, something like this, right? You get handed this A matrix, you go ahead and you compute this quantity, S I minus A, and then you take its inverse. That gives you the, uh, the state transition matrix in the Laplace domain, right? So you go ahead and compute phi of S is equal to S I minus A inverse, right? And then what you have to do is we really need to get this back into the time domain. So what we're gonna then do is you're gonna have to do an inverse Laplace transform, right? To get lowercase phi of t in the time domain. And that's gonna be something that might be a little bit ugly, but at least the workflow is clear, right? And in fact, since we've talked about this entire workflow of you know Laplace transforms, partial fraction expansion, inverse Laplace transform, all that kind of jazz, um, you can look up on the channel how to do this manually if you want, but I'm a little bit lazy, so let's just run over to a computer tool like Mathematica and work through this a, a little bit more quickly. All right, so here's our A matrix. Let's go ahead and get that into Mathematica. Um, and then the next thing we're, we're gonna want to do is go ahead and calculate the matrix exponential, but we're gonna do it in the Laplace domain using the expression we just talked about, right? So we can basically say phi of S, right, is um, S times identity matrix of two minus A, and then I think we have to invert this entire thing, right? So let's go ahead and calculate the inverse of that entire thing. There we go. So that's SI minus A inverse, right? And let's go ahead and look at that now in matrix form. And there we have it. So this is the uh, matrix exponential in the Laplace domain. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and calculate this in the time domain by just basically performing the inverse Laplace transform of each one of these terms one at a time. So again, um, let's start with the A11 term, right? And we could, basically take this term here and do its inverse Laplace transform, right? 
We could go ahead and identify the poles. We could go to perform partial fraction expansion. We could do the inverse Laplace transform lookup table by hand. Um, but again, I'm a little bit lazy. I'm going to assume you've watched our videos and you can do this by hand if you want. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and just use Mathematica's inverse Laplace transform function and let's look at the one one element and go from the s to the time domain right so here we go i can shift enter that and wabam here we are this is the expression right in fact let's go ahead and expand this just to make it look a little bit easier right you can see all of its constituent parts there we go so that is this term right here uh into the time domain, right? So you know what? Let's just go ahead and do this for the other terms as well, for the one two element, the two one element, and the two two element. So I'll just go ahead and let's just input all of them. There we go. So we've got the entire matrix, right? So in fact, I could write this now. Here's phi in the time domain is basically just the a one one a whoops a one two a two one and a two two, right? So here is the Here's our matrix exponential. So this is what we obtained using the Laplace, the Laplace technique. So to double check ourselves, let's just go ahead and check our, our result, what we just calculated, against Mathematica's matrix exp function. So again, let's check our result. Is that the same thing as if we had just used Mathematica's matrix exp function on AT, right? So let's do this. And um, well, I guess what we're gonna have to do is ask it to simplify this. And then we say true. So great. We are fairly confident that what we calculated here using the Laplace technique is the same thing as using Mathematica's matrix EXP function. So there you have it. It's a pretty simple way to go about this um, by calculating the Laplace transform of the matrix exponential. All right, so there you have it. A pretty easy way to go ahead and calculate the matrix exponential using the Laplace technique. Um, I don't want to make this a long video, so I think this is probably a good spot to leave it. Uh, the only thing I will mention is that there are many ways to skin this cat in terms of how to calculate the matrix exponential. And we're going to look at two other different ways to do this as well, the modal technique and the Cayley Hamilton technique. Um, and those are going to be in dedicated other videos. So I hope we'll be able to catch you at one of those future discussions where we can all learn something new together. So with that being said, um, I think we'll probably sign off now. Um, I hope to catch you again. Talk to you later. Bye.